the European View podcast. Your place to navigate the insights of our policy journal, brought to you by the Martin Center, with Sara Pini. Hello and welcome to the European View podcast, your new way to navigate through the main issues of our policy journal with valuable insights from the authors themselves. I'm Sarpini, a senior research officer at the Martin Center, and today I am very happy to host the chair of our academic council and former secretary general of the European Parliament, Klaus Welle, who wrote the framework article for the latest issue of the European View titled The Future of the Center-Right in Europe and the 70s. You can find this and all the other European View articles on our website, martincenter.eu. So welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Zara. So um, as I was saying, your article gives a general framework for, for this issue of the European view, which is dedicated to the topic of sustainability. Sustainability is a very trendy word nowadays, but your definition of it differs somehow from the mainstream use of the word. So let's start from there. Let's start by explaining your ideas of sustainability. My understanding of sustainability is that politics has to be future-proof. More often than not, politicians are under the pressure to solve problems today. But I think it's a key responsibility, especially for a think tank like the Martin Center, to come up with concepts that are also valuable in 5, 10, 15 or 20 years so that prepare the future. I like sustainability as a concept because it's systematically combining the present and the future, and that fits very well to traditional Christian Democrat concepts, which are always there to reconcile between freedom and responsibility, between Europe and the nation state, uh, social market economy, between the social and the efficiency. The difference here is, I believe, there's no reason to just apply sustainability to one sector. Sustainability is an overarching uh, principle which should be applied to everything across the board. And that's why it's suggested with our 7Ds to apply also the question of sustainability to debt. So is our debt sustainable or not? Is our defense policy sustainable or not? Rather, no. What about demographics? We are rapidly aging society. Have we taken the right measures to prepare for this? And what about our democracy, which is increasingly under threat from extremists? So these are just a couple of issues. So I believe it's wrong to apply sustainability just to one sector like the environment. We have to use this as a principle across the board for all policy issues. Yeah, and this comes at the end of your article, and it's a sort of introduction for the following articles, which focus on each of these seven Ds. But before that, the beginning of your article uh, analyzes the evolution of the PP family uh, that you had the opportunity to closely follow uh, over 30 years. First as chair of the youth organization DEMIC, then secretary general of the EPP, then of the group, and finally of the European Parliament itself. What are your main takeaways from this uh, privileged uh, viewpoint? Uh, The European Party, People's Party, has gone through a transition that's very clear, um, as have done its member parties. Uh, It has become, over the last 25 years, consistently the strongest political force in Europe, Uh, It has had the privilege to have with Ursula von der Leyen, with uh, José Manuel Durao Barroso and Jean-Claude Juncker, uh, the last commission presidents. So we have been taking responsibility for this continent in a leading role. And we've been able to do this by bringing together Christian Democrat, conservative and liberal ideas. This was the change that uh, was happening inside the EPP after 1993, the collapse of the Italian Christian Democrats, an open People's Party which takes inspiration from these three, but always based on political program. So we give preference to program over nominalism. It's not how parties are called, it's what they want to do together. And the core ideas are basically the same over the last 70 years. 
uh, its European integration, its transatlantic partnership, its social market economy uh, in an environment which is livable also for the future. Okay, so the, the idea behind your article is to define what DPP is, but also what it's not, what tells it apart, especially from uh, the extreme right. What do you think are the main dividing lines? Uh, in some countries, like in France, the assumption is there's a kind of continuity from the center-right to the right, and I'm completely opposed to this idea. The extreme right is, in fact, the opposite to what the EPP defends. The extreme right wants to destroy the European Union. Uh, many are pro-Putin, pro-Russia, which is violent, as we can see currently in Ukraine. And they are threatening and endangering parliamentary democracy. But these are the key pillars on which the EPP is founded. We want to create a united Europe. We are in favor of transatlantic partnership and we defend parliamentary democracy, pluralism and the rule of law. So this, this is not a continuity. We are opposites uh, in the political fight. And uh, we witnessed in the last European elections, once again, um, a growth of these uh, extreme parties on the right, but also on the left. Uh, and the dwindling of uh, mainstream parties such as the EPP. Uh, but is this an inevitable evolution or is there something we can do in the next European election to uh, counter the rise of extremists, of nationalists, of anti-European parties? Uh, the core political promise of uh, the extreme right uh, and also surprisingly sometimes very similar of the extreme left is to protect by closure. So this is a project against the open society. Uh, therefore, the question is, can we also protect in the open society? And uh, with the 70s, we try to bring forward some ideas how we can do this. Protection means border protection. Protection means defense, which becomes more and more urgent with Russia's violent policies not only the war in Ukraine, but pressure also against many member states, starting from Finland to the Baltics, Romania and so on. But it also means social protection. So let's now look beyond the, uh, the uh, 2024 European elections. Um, what do you see as the future of the centre-right and of the EPP? I think we have to organise the future. We have to be the party of the future. We are already the party of strong women. If you look at Roberta Metzola as the president of the European Parliament and as Ursula von der Leyen as president of the European Commission, could also hint at 16 years chancellorship of Angela Merkel in Germany. But we have to be the party that builds a future not built on hatred, but on reconciliation in society, bringing the different groups in society together, the young and the older ones, workers, business people, Um, entrepreneurs, uh, people working for, uh, for the state. And this based on a program of conciliation, but with a very strong focus on the future. And that's why the Martin Center has proposed 175 practical policy projects for the next legislature on the 70s, which are implementable, and we hope we can inspire the debate uh, for the future. Which leads me to my final question. Uh, what do you believe should be the main priorities for the EU in the next legislature, between these 175, let's say? Personally, I think that um, given the very aggressive stance of Russia, given also the increasing conflict between China and the United States in Asia, which resembles in its structure very much the situation in Europe before the First World War, where you have the up-and-coming industrialized power investing into a major fleet-building program. At the time, Germany of the Kaiser, now China of the Communist Party. And you have the established industrial power, the United States, which is challenged. The very similar conflict structure we are seeing basically every week 
confrontations between ships or uh, airplanes. So a very fragile situation, and I think we have to do everything to calm this down, but also be prepared that it could escalate. Um, we cannot say what Russia is doing over the next five or ten years, uh, but we have to assume that it could be aggressive also against member states of the European Union. And this with, um, let's say, developments in the United States themselves with a potential Trump II presidency, which are also worrying. So we have to be able on our continent to defend ourselves, at least, co at least conventionally. And that's what we are working on in papers on defense, uh, which go much more in detail, which are going to be published in the next weeks and months. Thank you very much, German, for joining us. And for those listening in, I invite you uh, to uh, check our website to find not only uh, the, all the articles of the European View, but also the 7Ds and all the other projects on which we are currently working. Uh, uh, thank you very much and stay tuned for more. Thank you, Zara. This was the European View podcast, your place to navigate the insights of our policy journal. Follow the Martin Centre for more.